Well, I'm kind of sad because the Brahmas lost, but it was XFL opening weekend. What makes me happy is the XFL is actually pretty badass. We're going to get into that as our very own stats was at the opener for the Brahmas. And also All-Star Weekend. I kind of... I kind of like the dunk contest a little bit this year because of one person. It wasn't too bad. The All-Star game, still trash. But one thing that's not trash, obviously a special leaf tea. It's olive tea. It's 100% natural. You know, it, it's 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 perfect. It's all it is. It's perfect. It's a perfect 50 like you see Mac McClung get on the dunk contest. It's special leaf tea. Go to their website, www.specialleaf.com. Order yours today. Gentlemen, it's Rock. It's Mark. Y'all all right, man? You know, y'all okay? Because I'm trying to see if I need to wake y'all up from this weekend because the All-Star game was this weekend for the NBA, and it's got to be one of the most trash-ass All-Star games. All-Star games, period, in all sports. I mean, that's, I can't be the only one feeling like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to agree on that. I mean, the All-Star game has gone pretty downhill as it is. I mean, I think the part that was kind of cool and more interesting was the live draft that they did. It kind of just like they said, reminds you of, you know, like pick up, you know, who's getting picked up and you see who's like, you know, favorites and then friends. And it's kind of typical what you see in pick up ball, man. I mean, if you're a captain, you're always picking up your boy. And then you, and then you get, you know, have that little rivalry if your boy gets picked by the, by the opponent and this and that. But yeah, I mean, the All Star game, you have its it has its moments, but I mean, there's no one's playing defense at all. I mean, there were some spectacular shots and like some dunks. You're like, damn, like that's cool, but it's just like there was no defense, so it was kind of de- defeatless. But you know, props to Jason Tatum, even though there was no defense, he did score 55, and that was pretty cool to see. But like you mentioned earlier, and was we're gonna dive into the slam dunk contest was, was pretty interesting this year. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I mean, Mac McClum kind of revived the All-Star, I mean, the Slam Dunk Contest in itself. I agree, man. The All-Star game was trash. Stats, what do you think about the All-Star game? We're going to get a little more into it. We're going to dive into it more, but I want to know your opinion on the All-Star game first because it's it's always been trash. I think it's still going to continue to be trash. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't watched the All-Star game in a while. I just watched the highlights of this year's, and there were some moments like Rock uh, touched on. Um I thought the, and again, Jason Tatum uh, shined in this one. There always seems to be that one guy who just kind of steals the show at those games, um, whether it's Giannis or Tatum. Uh, I did enjoy the duel between um, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. I thought that was pretty fun. They were on opposite sides of the ball, uh, and it was cool seeing them take shots over each other and defend each other and try to one-up one another. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I mean, outside of some flashy, uh, dunks, LeBron had some cool spots. Uh, he got hurt by the way, uh, him. And I think Giannis had like one was in the game for like 30 seconds, not even. Yeah. Yeah, and he then got he left the first points of the game and then they took him out. Yeah. He had that wrist injury. So hopefully he recovers. Uh, but yeah, we had some weird injuries in this one. You don't usually see that happen too often in the all-star game, but. But you know, the crazy part is LeBron sat out. Okay. So. LeBron breaks Kareem's record, obviously. Then what happens? He doesn't play another game after that. He Then he plays, what, one game prior to the All-Star game? But all of a sudden, his ankle is magically healed. He's doing all these dunks, and he's just going crazy in an All-Star game. That's got to be some of the biggest bullshit I've ever seen. If there's ever a moment where you think a player quit on his team, that's got to be it. I mean, you have everybody talking about Anthony Davis. Oh, he didn't cheer LeBron when he broke the record. You know why? Because Davis doesn't give a shit about the record. He's pissed off because you're still down like 12 to the Grizzlies. Or not the Grizzlies, the Thunder, the Oklahoma State Thunder. I mean. They lost that game, yeah. And they, they ended up losing that game. But it was all about LeBron breaking the damn record. So LeBron comes out today and is like, oh, you know, these last 23 games are super important. You know, got to make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. It's now just, you know, a must that you got to win games. I mean, it, it's – I don't know, man. I've got a bad feeling about LeBron, and I think – you know you know me, guys. I'm not a LeBron fan. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I, I respect his game. He's got a great game. He's one of the best players to ever play the game. I will give him that. But as far as a teammate, 
as far as him in general outside okay so outside of what he does for the kids i know he puts a lot of kids through college he has schools and everything that's a great thing for him but on the court and all that stuff he's got to be one of the most difficult guys to work with I, i don't know if that's just me but after seeing this bullshit that he pulled i'm beginning to really not like him at all and, and uh, I have to say, I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead, Rock. I got I was, it. I have to slightly kind of agree. I mean, I mean, in reality, we'll probably never know. I mean, unless one of us magically make the NBA, hey, there's still a chance. But, uh, Shit, no. <laughs> yeah, if Andre Ingram can do it, we can do it, Rudy. Maybe the, they, they give you a 10 day and you go against LeBron and you see him one on one and then he just dunks on you. Wasn't that guy like 50, though? <laughs> yeah. He looked like uh what's his name? He's... Don Cheadell, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My gosh. No, but I mean, I think over the years you've seen how difficult he can be as a teammate and kind of, you know, heard you know, how pressured you, you know you have to feel when it's LeBron. And I imagine, you know, those players, his teammates are pretty mad. I mean, I'm not surprised the Lakers were pretty trash to start of the season and, and still are. Just because of that weird makeup of the team, it's just you know it was LeBron really led. You know, as many people call him the GM and the whole leader of the whole team, and he makes the decisions. But it's going to be interesting. I know it's going to be a long shot that they made the playoffs just to see how they do with the new look Lakers they have. But I mean, it, they are important, like LeBron says. But I, I mean, where was that energy before? You know, but like again, that whole team was just so dysfunctional, and I don't know how many people thought this team, even with LeBron's greatness, and you know him. Uh, evidently carrying teams in the past with a trash team. Like there was no way they're gonna carry that he could carry this Lakers team with Anthony Davis in and out of the lineup like every other week. It's a terrible, yeah. terrible team. Go ahead, stats. Yeah, and well like even LeBron's battled his own injuries. Like a good a lot of people kind of forget about that. But in the in recent seasons he's been dealing with injuries like often on the court. You know, he's he's sitting on the bench sometimes and um him and Anthony Davis just never seem to really get to play together. Uh, very often so they're stuck with like this ragtag group of guys and it just feels like it's desperation from this lakers team man like they try to trade they make like desperate trades they try to pick up these dudes in off seasons that they hope work um like just random pieces and um to hopefully mesh with these two stars but the two stars can't stay healthy together and um these pieces just aren't working out whatever the gm's doing the team building isn't working i'll tell you that they're bringing in the wrong pieces they should have brought in Buddy Heald when they had the chance. Um, and now Russell Westbrook is with the Clippers, uh, so that's that's going to be interesting. But as far as the Lakers go, yeah, I mean, it's a dysfunctional team. Um, and LeBron has a history of injuries, so I, I believe that he is he has been hurt um, a good amount. And um, I don't know, he's been on I, – I can understand why LeBron would kind of take the reins and kind of flash his ego a little bit and show like, hey, I'm the one in charge – because, I mean, he was stuck with Cleveland for a while, and Cleveland really did not treat him properly um, in bad really? management over there. You don't yeah. think so? No. No, that original run and the way that Dan Gilbert, like, trashed him for what he did, and I was like, no. No, that that, that organization didn't even deserve him for the second run. Wow. You know, that's kind of surprising. I... I... I mean, I understand Cleveland. Okay, so, I mean, you're talking about Cleveland. So you have LeBron. In what way did they not take care of him that first go around? I mean, I know they didn't surround him with players, but. That's exactly it. Well, that and then when he left, instead of wishing him the best of luck, Dan Gilbert just trashed him on the way out. It's amazing he even came back. They are lucky that LeBron wanted to come back. And you know what? If LeBron wants to come back, you know, and give him a little more control. I don't don't mind them, like. You know, LeBron, like, GM mode, but I don't mind that. Like, you know, they, they're they lucky he even came back. You give him give him the keys. Let him have, like, let him do what he wants. I mean, yeah. not like their, their management was doing a good job in the first run. Well, you're going to bring in an old Shaq, what, Larry Hughes? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and, and, and an old Big Z, no offense to Big Z. I love Big Z, but, you know, he was at the twilight of his career, man. Like, There's that roster. Go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like that two th- the 2007 team was not good. Um, no, it wasn't good. I mean, you're talking what second best player was what Booby Gibson, dude, yeah. Delonte West. <laughs> oh oh man, Delonte West. Oh, he's got the moves like Jagger. Right? He was 
He was a he was bronze teammate on the court and bronze stepdad off the court. Hey oh man, gosh. I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I hope I hope Delonte West, you know, keeps you know improving his health, man. Mm-hmm. And help he needs. I know I see a lot of video surface of him homeless, and it looks like he's doing better. And many people have tried to help him out, but hopefully, you know, he he gets over that hump, man. Yeah, as much as we make fun of. Him. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I was I was I was gonna say before we move on, kind of move on. I was gonna say if you are the Cavs GM and you know LeBron's an upcoming free agent, um, no, I mean, no, 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 no. no just hear me out. And I'm just saying, like, if you're the Cavs GM and let's say you, the Lakers do a sign and trade, what are you trading? Like your your like final offer, like you're trading to get LeBron if you're the Cavs. If I'm the Cavs, okay, well, well Jared but- Allen. Truth be told, I would not trade for him at all. But like, but you're the Cavs, and, and like they're like, oh, but, so it's like, trade for LeBron. We need LeBron. Like, what are you trading? Off of that squad, probably. You know, I don't even know if I would trade Jared Allen, man. I mean, you have Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, Donovan Mitchell, uh, Garland. Darius Garland. Yeah. <sighs> Honestly, man, there's really no trade piece that I would be comfortable moving on that team for LeBron. I mean, I'm being not because I'm a LeBron, you know, hater or whatever. People yeah. want to call me a hater. It's not anything like that. But if I'm looking at my team, I've got I've got very young guys and very good young guys. I don't know if I'd want to disrupt that, knowing that I'd bring in LeBron, knowing I'd have to give up an Evan Mobley. And probably some draft picks, or maybe even Jared Allen and some draft picks. I don't mm-hmm. think I would do that, man. I, that's it's not worth it knowing that he's on the literally the backside of his career. I don't think so. I mean, so. to me, he has a couple more years left, just the way he's playing it. But what are you going to get out of him? Okay, so let me reverse this. You want to trade for LeBron because you're Cleveland, and you're like, you know what? Okay, we'll take on LeBron, and you give up. Say you give up, maybe you have to give up Mitchell, your best player, Donovan Mitchell, and a draft pick. I mean, are you the the body language you see in LA? Mm-hmm. You really want that for your young Cavs team? Like, well, I mean, LeBron brings the veteranship, though. He brings he brings all those years of experience to a young squad. Uh, he doesn't have a decrepit Anthony Davis who's off the court like half the season. Like those Cavs are staying healthy, man. They got well, a lot of young LeBron, talent. He's good. What does LeBron bring? I mean, you said okay, you said veteran leadership and championship experience and all that, but I mean, you you we're seeing what's going on in L.A. Mm-hmm. It's not a good. It's not a pretty sight. The dude's about to miss the playoffs for the second time in a row. Like, I mean, he's not on a good team. That's what I mean. The, we we can't forget that man. Like the whole Wait. Russell Westbrook debacle set the team back years. Anthony Davis's with, injuries. Even with Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, yes, I know he's injury prone. I swear, I get that. There's no one else on the team, man. But that's not. I said, see, that shouldn't be. That should be on Bron, if anything. If you're the greatest player in the league right now, quote unquote, people, you're the king. Hey, you know what? All this brown, 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 whatever, whatever. How is it that he could put a team together in Miami, but mm-hmm. the Lakers can't do the same thing for L.A.? It, it, it makes no sense. You were able to get a sharpshooter in Ray Allen. These guys can't even go get a sharpshooter that wants to be on the Lakers squad. I mean, you're right. Buddy Heald? Would have been perfect for LA. That would have solved their shooting problems. Mm-hmm. You could have gone and got a fucking Danny Green. I mean, you you they don't have shooting. But how is it that a Miami Heat team with three guys at max contracts were able to field a title contending team? But yet the most historic franchise in NBA history, no disrespect to Boston, cannot do that. That's the importance of a locker room culture, man. Team culture, good organization, trust in an organization. Pat Riley, you know, yeah. Spolstra, the Heat, they're one of the most respected. And no one talks about this, by the way, but they're one of the most respected organizations in the league because of how they operate. Yeah. So, I mean, there's I, a major difference. We're not, we can't even compare 
the trust that players have between the Heat versus the Lakers organization. Even when Kobe was there, like near the twilight years, the Lakers were a mess. Remember that Lakers squad when they had like Robert Sackrid, like mm. Steve Blake out there, you know, and yeah. some other randoms from the YMCA playing out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. You're okay. So you're trying to you're trying to convince me now that the current the current construction of the Lakers, where you have LeBron, who's day to day because you know he tweaks his left toenail. You have Anthony Davis. Now you have D'Angelo Russell. You have a true point guard and a yeah. scoring point guard. You have Malik Beasley, who him and Scottie Pippen Jr. are probably best friends now somewhere. You have – now Jared Vanderbilt doesn't do shit for me. But you have uh, Rui Hachimura. So yeah. you've got players. Well, now you do. You know, and, like D'Angelo okay. just got there, man. Well, yeah, but I mean, okay, so technically out of the play in game, they're one game out, dude. One and a half, roughly, maybe, yeah, about one and a half games out. So you can't tell me, you can't mean to tell me that 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 this Lakers team can't make the play in game. Oh, yeah, I think they can make the play in game. That's what I just, you know, kind of going back to uh, a couple minutes ago, I was saying that, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how they do with this new Lakers squad. You know, arguably, you know, they got a little more help. And, you know, it solves their problem with having a true point guard instead of it having to run Russell Westbrook out there and, and Patrick Beverly. I mean, at least you have D'Lo who can naturally score and and distribute. I mean, as God forbid he get hurt, but, I mean, at least you have more weapons now, on, even on the bench too. You know, you have Lonnie coming off the bench mm-hmm. and, and with Royce. I mean, I mean Vanderbilt, he just provides that defensive presence. I mean, uh, he can hit a three here and there, but I think I like the Malik, Malik Beasley pickup too, but – It'd be interesting. I think they make the play in at least. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, do they make the do they make the play in first? Yeah. Do you think I they think do? they make the play in? Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, if we're going technical, they can go on a nice little winning streak. If they win, say they go on a nice six game winning streak, mm-hmm. then they're looking at shit. They're looking at fifth seed, sixth seed, almost. So they're in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But I mean. This is where it comes into. You saw LeBron sit out before the All-Star game. How is he miraculously better to play for the All-Star game? That that if you guys can explain that to me, I guarantee you we're going to win the lottery this weekend. It's unknown. How are you my ankle hurts, my ankle hurts, but yeah, you're at the Super Bowl. You're cool. I don't care if you're at the Super Bowl, you're there. But then you're also playing in the All-Star game. After sitting out what? five games before the All-Star game. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, yeah, I'm going to go play in the All-Star game. The most meaningless game other than the NFL Pro Bowl that is in existence. I mean, there are, there are literal CYO games that have more meaning than the NBA All-Star game. And how did, how do you, that's what I'm saying. What, there's no team out there. And I'm convinced there's no players that want to come to the Lakers squad knowing that this guy is the way he is. I, I would I would literally get rid of LeBron if given the opportunity. You're not going to win shit with him. And see, this is why you need to be the GM of the Lakers because, I mean, let's say they don't trade him to the Cavs, but they trade him to a team that's, you know, Kind of a fringe playoff team, you know, East or West, but they want to get over the hump. Or the owner thinks, you know, adding LeBron what can help them get over. If I'm the Lakers, I'm getting as much draft capital on a young player as much as you can, just to kind of rebuild your future. I mean, I would blow it up and trade AD in and LeBron, you know, just to build up your team again. I mean, LeBron, arguably, even though he does get injured here and there and gets knocked knocked up, I think he has a good maybe two more years in him, and you know, with his production and just his leadership on the court, I feel like he can help a team or they can be among the favorites if they have a LeBron on the team. But I mean, if I'm a, if I'm the genie bus, I'm trading LeBron and getting as much assets as I can. So where, okay. So let me throw this scenario here and this is going to, I'm pretty sure Twitter and everybody's going to roast the shit out of us. But if you're, if you're genie bus, which, you know, none of us are genie bus, that's for sure. Um, we wouldn't, none of us would date Phil Jackson ever in our lifetime. 
And I'm like, you know what? You want LeBron? Let me call. I'm going to stay in the West. Call Golden State. You want to take on, okay, well, you know, we'd love to take on Jordan Poole. We'd love to take on maybe a Moses Moody. And you know what? We'll even take Draymond. A Lakers team with Jordan Poole, a D'Angelo Russell, Anthony Davis, Draymond Green, to me sounds a lot better than the current constructed Lakers. Now, it gives them Clay Thompson and Seth Curry and LeBron James, but... What does that do? It's going to, one of those guys is going to have to lose out on points. Steph is probably going to be okay with not getting as much shots. But again, you take away from the dynamic. So my point is, other than shipping his ass to Detroit or Houston, what team that is even considered a contender would take on the problem that is LeBron James? And again, we're going to get cooked for this. I, at least I am. You guys probably not. I will get cooked for it. I don't care. But there's no contender out there that should say we want LeBron James. Period. I'll let, I'll let stats go first. I got one immediately right off the bat, and it's Miami. Oh, man. And, you know, I get the Miami thing, too. It they're, makes they're sense. Like, they're like the one organization that – it's so interesting because, like, again, I mentioned, like, no one really talks about how respectable that organization is from top to bottom. But he was there before. He would make sense. He'd had leadership. The roster is already stacked anyway, as is. They could just add a few depth pieces. And I think they would be able to get it done. I don't know, man. Even with Miami, you should. Be, okay, so he goes to if he goes to Miami again. I mean. Does he get along with Jimmy Butler? Does he work well with a Tyler Hero? I mean, these are the guys that, you know, and let's not be real, they're, they, they're going to sign Kevin Love if they haven't already. I mean, that's like the only saving grace to get a LeBron James there. But, again, Kevin's probably not going to play beyond this season, I don't think. I don't know if Miami's a good fit. You'd have to really convince me, Stats, that he fits somewhere on any type of contender. I don't I don't see it. I don't see a coach, even like Spolstra, who I'm definitely saying it, Spolstra is the second best coach in the league, period, hands down. And if you catch me on a drunken night, I may even convince you he's the best coach over one Gregory Popovich. I might even say that on a drunk night. I mean, there's there's cases that could be made. And I don't even think Spolstra wants to go through that shit again with LeBron. I mean, what I don't what are you guys thinking? Is Miami the only option? I mean I mean going back to the Golden State thing. I I just think if uh Bob Myers, you know, hears Genie Bus like He's gonna tell her, well, hell no, Jordan Poole's not gonna be that person. First off, you know, I feel like they they would rather pitch like a Moses Moody and Draymond in picks, you know, doing that just because Draymond Draymond's big contract, and then just, they don't they've been wanting to move Moses Moody and maybe throw in someone else, or even they will even say, hey, let's throw in the Wiseman. I don't know realistically what they would do, but I mean, they don't have Wiseman anymore. He's in Detroit. Oh, they don't. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Yeah, but Moses Moody and maybe another young player that they have, but. I mean, I'm looking at the West standings. You see, I don't know if a teens a teens would take on that. I mean, it's they they're making the playoffs in almost over uh, for the first time in almost over a decade or two. I mean, maybe the teens get desperate because they don't want to they don't want to lose out. But I don't know what you would trade realistically what you have. Ugh. I mean, there's nobody in the West you would send him to. I mean, maybe Minnesota. Yeah, but maybe. I mean, I think they're already regretting the Rudy Gobert trade. Oh god. Yeah. Minnesota, yeah, they are definitely regretting Rudy Gobert. That that was terrible. I Jesus. mean, what if I what if I throw out a hypothetical scenario where both LA teams trade stars? I mean Lakers Lakers <clears throat> trade like like just trade a PG and then the other uh, I wouldn't trade PG for LeBron. No. Because I'm looking in fact, at you. in fact the Clippers they got they became the second best team by signing Westbrook today in the West. 
they legitimately became the second best team in the West. Did they though? Yes. Oh yeah. I, I, I would, you know, smash my nuts with suck with a hammer, you know, just to prove that point. They, oh, they go ahead. Legitimately... Yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead and explain like just, just for the listening okay, audience. So, Cause I'm curious too. Okay. So you've, you're already one of the better teams just with Kawhi Leonard alone. I mean, when he's healthy, Kawhi Leonard is the best two-way player in the game, hands down. Nobody is better than him when healthy, when he plays. PG, again, one of the better two-way players on the team. Now, you look at the current roster that they had, you know, pre-Westbrook. And, you know, you got rid of guys like John Wall. Perfect. Get rid of him. He wasn't working out. Um I think Reggie Bullock is another guy. They got rid of him. Bam. They brought in guys. Uh, they brought in uh, Mason Plumley. Perfect. Perfect center for the West. Is able to bang in there with, along with Zubak. Marcus Morris. Great addition there. I love that right there. Not only that, I mean, they got in one other piece, and that's Eric Gordon. You're adding another shooter that allows Paul George and Kawhi Leonard to be creative when they get that double team. So you got to shoot an Eric Gordon. Enter Russell Westbrook. Paul George had his best season, one of his best seasons in Oklahoma City alongside Russell Westbrook. Same year, Russell Westbrook averaged a triple-double. Kawhi Leonard is the absolute 100% star on this team. He's the number one option. PG is second. What I think the difference between Westbrook and in L.A. Clippers compared to L.A. Lakers is Westbrook can be that facilitator. And one thing he does is he runs something that Paul George loves to do. Get on the open open court. This entire Clipper team is like, I have a feeling it's going to be like Showtime from back in the day. They're going to run. They're going to want to run. And I'm liking that. It's going to be a really quick really quick team and the great thing about it is you're going to get a lot of people that say russell westbrook is shit because he can't guard he can't defend well when you have the two best defenders in the nba or two of the best one of them being the absolute best defender in the nba you can hide his faults on the defensive side and let's not pretend russ isn't good on defense he's a lot better than a lot of the point guards he's a lot better than Freaking Trey Young is a lot better than um, Steph Curry. On the defensive side, Russ is pretty good, and he's pretty quick. He can grab some steals. So they immediately become a quick team and a lethal team just by these additions. That's why I've got them second in the West now, and nobody could touch Denver. I mean, nobody can touch Denver. But when they made when the Russell said he's going to sign there, I kind of had a little bit of doubt in there because that's one team that can definitely put it to Denver with those three guys. I really feel, and I'm not a Russell Westbrook fan, but in this scenario, I think this is the perfect scenario for Russell Westbrook. I just wish Russ was better at shooting, man. I don't think that, he needs that to is... be. You have so much shooting on this team. He doesn't have to be a good shooter. He just has to, in other words, he just has to be that point guard. Get to the basket. He can get to the basket. He doesn't have to be a jump shooter in the scene. You've got Paul George. You've got Kawhi. You've got Eric Gordon. Marcus Morris can shoot. Terrence Mann can shoot. Um, You've got guys that can shoot. Norman Powell is having a freaking year. You've got guys that can score the ball, man. If Russ can just be a facilitator, whew. This would be hands down one of the teams to beat in the West. I mean, yeah, I I, I can see that. I mean, like, like you know, stats said, you know, like I agree with that stats, and that I'm just worried about he can shoot ball. I just wonder, you know, if they're gonna throw him to the fire and put him in the starting lineup so quickly, or what's gonna happen with minutes with Terrence Mann? You know, Terrence Mann's a young guy who's been who's been playing. Solid, you know, not a fantastic season, but he's been playing solid. But I wonder how much of impact Russ is going to have right off the back. But it's going to be interesting what they do, you know, when they have the spread out minutes, Norman Powell and Eric Jordan, like you said. But it also interesting, too, to me is they went out and got bones, but I guess Highland, but I guess 
they didn't realize he was a guy that they really wanted. And I remember Bones was, you know, advocated that he really wanted minutes. So now he's probably going to lose all his minutes. And he, the reason he went to the Clippers because he thought he was getting minutes. But I mean, I can see it. But it's not a bad, did. it's not a bad thing. Bones Highland is still going to play alongside Russ, and, I, and that's one guy I forgot. They added Bones Highland too. I mean, it's not a. He's not going to lose as many minutes as we think. Um, you're probably what you're probably going to see is you're probably going to see you know Bones play alongside Russ, which I don't really recommend because both guys are kind of chaotic and wild. But you know if Russ slips into that starting point guard spot, you might see Bones play with Terrence Mann. You're gonna, in other words, you're gonna have two guys that can spell, you know, Paul George and Mann or Paul George and Russell Westbrook. You can come in with you know. Terrence Mann and Bones or Terrence Mann and Eric Gordon or somebody or even Bones Highland and Eric Gordon. I mean, you've got different options. You have a good you have a good and, and this is a straight up three amigos quote here. You have a good plethora of players from the Clippers and that's kind of what now I think they go what eight men deep on the roster. So yeah, I mean, that's a that's a really good problem to have, I think. Yeah, I was about to say the depth is definitely the biggest plus in this. And I'm glad you mentioned uh, Powell because he's been like, he's had a pretty good season, but it, again, he's just one of those players that not a lot of people are talking about. Yeah, no, he's not. And he's having a good season. That's why, that's what I'm saying. I think this Clipper squad is going to surprise a lot of people. They they really are. With As long as Kawhi stays healthy, they've got a chance. Now, mm-hmm. Yeah. Denver Denver still is my my team and they're still the team that's going to win the title in my opinion. I had them in the beginning and I'm still sticking with them but if Kawhi Leonard stays healthy this Clippers team is one that can easily upset Denver and go to the way, and go to the finals in the NBA. I think so. I mean they they are they're built to to do it now. I feel Yeah, man, you got you got all you got a bunch of players in Denver that are playing probably the best basketball they've played in their entire careers. I mean, like Aaron Gordon just completely rejuvenated, like since he had been to since he's been in Denver. So, yeah, I mean, and that's just Gordon. We we already know how good Joker is. Murray's like a stud, and you know they create this nice one-two punch. They got depth on that team too, just well coached as well. So. Yeah, man. I, I think I can I can definitely see that. Yeah, because you're going, I mean, Murray, Porter Jr., Gordon, Jokic, uh, Conte, uh, Contavious, Caldwell Pope, Christian Braun is just playing lights out. Uh, Bruce Brown, Jeff Green. Let's not forget, you need to go deeper in the center position. They have DeAndre Jordan there. I mean, there's uh, Ish Smith. I think Ish Smith is like their 10th guy on the roster, and that's that's – crazy to think that ish smith is that far down on the roster i mean denver has a squad where as long as egos don't come into play they're going to be tough to beat they're going to be one of the hardest outs period in the nba so we'll see what happens with uh with the nba coming up here soon we've only got like what 24 games 25 games left in the regular season period for all these teams. So we're going to see what happens. Do the Lakers make the playoffs? We don't know. Do they make the play in hell? Who knows? Well, one thing for sure is the Spurs are definitely not going anywhere this season. They're fighting for that number one seed in the lottery. But then again, lottery is lottery, man. It's no guarantee. You go buy a lottery ticket, you're not a millionaire just because you need the money. No, you have to actually – get the first pick and the Spurs are not exactly in that prime position yet. Even if they have the worst record in the league, they are, they still could opportunity not get the first pick at all. So real quick, I want to remind you guys about special leave tea, hundred percent natural ingredients, no added sugar. One of the great energy drinks out there. It's all natural. Go to their website, www.specialleaf.com. Order your four pack or your case today. XFL dude. Started this weekend. Stats, you were out there. You were covering. You you did a phenomenal job, man. I love the video. Loved it. Loved it. You did a pregame. You did a postgame. We were keeping everybody up to date. How was the atmosphere, dude? It was hot, man. It was a hot crowd that day. Uh, I experienced the longest wave in my entire life. 
I don't know if you saw any clips of that wave that was going around the dome. Uh, I saw it. I saw it. It went. It went for a while, man. Just when we thought it was going to stop, it didn't. It kept going. Good crowd. The fans were into it. Um, the biggest story for me was just that defense for like most, no joke, most of that game, the uh, the Brahmas had control. Like the defense was smothering them. McCarron was getting hit. St. Louis couldn't really get too much going. Uh, Brahmas got the first touchdown of the game. And it wasn't until those last couple of minutes that the Brahmas left their foot off the gas and they just gave um, gave St. Louis a little bit too much life right down the stretch. They allowed two touchdowns in the last couple of minutes of the game and that's not you're not going to win a game uh doing that when you're allowing big plays um just out of the blue at the end you you got to play the entire game and you got to stay focused and it was a tough loss man and you know what um I'm not going to sugarcoat it they should feel bad those players really shouldn't the Brahmas should go in that locker room and say man how did we allow this to happen because they had total control of that game um it was a low scoring game in the beginning, especially the first half was very low scoring. I think it was like six to three. Mm. So the defense did its job. The offense started off a little slow, but even they, like I just said, they just scored the first touchdown in the game. So the offense started picking it up a little bit and it had all of the, uh, all of the pieces for a successful W in their home stadium in front of their fans. And um, they should feel a little bit deflated and Heinz Ward, I hope, um, lets them know like this was yours this was your game guys like you have to you cannot allow this to happen and I'm hoping that this loss humbles them and makes them realize that they have to play the entire game they cannot allow the other team to have any sort of life they can't get sloppy they had that roughing the passer call they allowed a 4 and 15 to be converted when they had control over AJ McCarron basically the entire game McCarron was getting hit uh, looked uncomfortable his pocket was collapsing the whole time and um, again I'm just hoping coach Ward goes into the next couple of weeks and hammers home what they uh, what they need to improve on it was a great game great atmosphere I mean we saw everybody was rocking the crowd was rocking and yeah it was a tough loss man it was a very tough loss but like one person on Twitter said they're not the only team in San Antonio to blow fourth quarter so <laughs> Rock, man, what did you feel about uh, XFL overall? I mean, I thought it was pretty interesting how they do it. You know, my favorite thing, even though it's not good for the Brahmas, was uh, how they do the one, two, or three-point uh, conversion. And mm-hmm. I, I think that was pretty cool, um, just seeing that. And then the fourth and 15 instead of onside. I mean, I wouldn't mind to see that the NFL adopt the fourth and 15 thing just to see, you know, some dramatic endings that we, that we could possibly see. But – I thought it was a good game. It is unfortunate that they blew a lead. Um, AJ McCarron breaks uh, fans in Texas' hearts again. I know he broke mine a long time ago against UT. <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, it was a real good game. Uh, hats off to them. Uh, TJ Vasher, who <laughs> many Cowboy fans thought he'd be the wide receiver one, or wide receiver two at least, excuse me. Uh, he had a decent game, but. There was it was popping, and I'm really glad to see that a lot of San Antonio came out to support, and they had the highest attendance out of all the games that weekend. And I'm just hoping that the, that the fans still come out to support. I mean, yeah, they lost, and some fans may see that you know maybe it's going to be a bad season or they're not as good as they, as they really were advertised. But man, come on, man, you got to support the team. It's a San Antonio team, and I, I think it's going to be a blast this season, uh, win or lose. But I think the most interesting and best part was the Rock coming out. You know, saying hi to the fans, San Antonio excited, but also announcing that the XFL championship game is going to be here. That's pretty cool. That was an awesome, awesome announcement. Stats, how did you feel when you heard that? It was awesome, man. Like his his entire um, like insp- inspirational speech at the beginning of the game was really cool. He was really, you could tell it was heartfelt and uh, it was genuine. And The Rock is always uh, really good with promos anyway, as we know. Anyone who saw his wrestling stuff, he knows how to, executing charisma he knows how to talk and speak to people and um just a lovable guy and the whole stadium like loved him and it was i just i really adored what he did and uh he just came across as a genuine guy who just loved it loved that experience loved being there and uh it was really cool and i think for i think the brahmas really needed that for their opener they needed as much hype going in to the start of this game as possible Fans really showed up. I think we hit over 24,000 in attendance. Yeah. Um, yeah. So fans did show up. But um, again, 
Like you want to have that victory, that hot start to the season to keep the hype going because their next three games are on the road. Um, so they're not going to have another home game for a little while. And their next home game is at nine o'clock in the dome. So in the morning, uh, no, at night. No. Yeah. Their next, their next home game is at nine o'clock at night so on a Sunday. On a Sunday. <laughs> Lord, mm-hmm. dude, people are going to be rallying f- downtown. <laughs> oh my God. It's going to be a, it's going to be a mess. <laughs> okay. So they're probably expecting a crowd of like 2000, maybe. I mean, See, there's... that's the thing. It's so late that work the next day. Um, you know, like how the the, ten, the attendance is the first thing that comes to mind as far as like a concern because I don't think they're going to get close to twenty four thousand for that next home game. Not not for nine o'clock at night. Who the hell decided nine o'clock at night? Yeah, it's it's again the scheduling was an issue for especially that second game and. And again, this is why I also stress like, it was so important for them to have a victory in their home opener with all this hype, the big turnout by the fans. I think it was really important for them to get that that big W and not just a win, but you know, a convincing win, like a win where they just dominated their opponents and you know showed that they are legit, they are real, and that this league is you know for real and here to stay. And you know, coming off of that tough loss that, and then you know, being on the road for the next three games and then coming back for a nine o'clock game on a Sunday night. Um, it's just tough schedule wise. I'm not sure why they did that. So the only way that they get a full dome for a nine o'clock game on a Sunday night is probably if they go on a three game winning streak on the road, get oh. that hive back. Mm-hmm. And I was asked to go to that game, the next one. And now that you're telling me it's nine o'clock at night, there's no way I'm going to go to that game. There's no way. I mean, Jesus, no way, man. Anyway, we'll figure that out here in a little bit. But I got to ask you guys real quick on this XFL thing. My thoughts are are this. The kickoff roll. 100% genius. 100% needs to be in the NFL. Loved every part of it. I mean, you take away... You take away the hard hits, the, the guys that are going full speed and bam. You're taking away those... I love the fact that, honestly, people may not see it, but if you're if you're doing the kickoffs that way, I can see more potential for kickoff returns for touchdowns there. I, I yeah. see it, mm-hmm. and I, I kind of like that. I wish the NFL would kind of adopt that, maybe in the preseason, just to see how it works. Because I love that idea. I mean, you're you're talking about, like I said, concussions almost gone right there because you're not having people collide with each other. They're only five yards apart. So, I mean, we can spit on each other at that, that for, you know, that feet right there. So I like that idea. The fourth and 15 rule, I saw more people bitching about it, but they were Brahma fans than I saw other people. I actually like that. I love that too, because the onside kick is what? Four percent, five percent probability. Where fourth and fifteen, if you really think about it, sit down and think about it, the probability isn't probably any higher. Yeah, it's not like it's fifty percent or whatever. I mean, technically, it's fifty percent. You either get it or you don't. But the probability of getting it still has to be right around what the fifteen, maybe twenty percent range. And I'm giving it too much credit. You think? No, I agree. It's like. What's your mm-hmm. fourth and fifteen play in your playbook? I mean, the yeah. guy. I mean, the, the receiver was wide open, and eventually you just gotta. You just have to make a play. Yeah. I mean, you, and you know, def- the defense know where the line of scrimmage is to go, and they're gonna do their best. But it's just gonna be a, a spectacular play. It's gonna be made every single time. And onside's the same thing. You know, you just get lucky. It's a spectacular play, sp- spectacular kick, bounces off someone. You know, lucky, big lucky catch. It's same probability, but it sucks when it's against your team. It's just, it, yeah, it's just wild though because McCarron was getting hit the entire game. So like, it's it's kind of baffling that they were able to get that converted. Yeah, it was. It was kind of weird. And I think what I saw from Twitter World was that the fact that, and I did see, I was watching the game too. Um, they just let up. The defense had just let up for some reason. I mean, there was no reason why they shouldn't have gotten to McCarron on that play. It made it tough for him. But nonetheless, man, I mean, 
like you said, there's not very many fourth and 15 plays there that are going to work. It's not going to happen very often. So I think Brahma fans need to just kind of chill about it for a little bit. And you know what? It happened. It's the first game. It's not going to be, it's not going to happen every single game. If it does, then I have no idea what to say. But one thing I know for sure is we're coming up to the end of the show here. The way we end every show is with sweeper keep. We got to get this in. So come on, Stats, bring it to us. I actually don't have a sweeper keep. <laughs> no? No, that's why I texted you. I got no, one. Yeah. Okay, so no, I got one. Okay. I got okay. one. And Go this isn't it. even a funny one. So, okay, I saw I saw a post on Twitter saying that Stefan Marbury 100%, which happy birthday, Stefan Marbury out there. Um, I heard a uh, post saying that he 100% should be in the NBA Hall of Fame, or the Basketball Hall of Fame. I'm sorry, not NBA basketball hall of fame because of his accomplishments overseas too and said person also said that he has a better basketball career than tony parker and Manu ginobili who are both hall of famers first off how does that make you guys feel about saying he had a better career than those guys uh i mean it's you put him over some big names there so that's what they're saying. I'm not I'm not putting him in over big names. That's yeah, not me saying that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. I know like internationally he's made a big difference. Um he's a star like internationally, mm-hmm. but I I mean as far as you know, Tony well, Tony Parker and Ginobili are both like technically they're international stars too. So I wouldn't uh I uh I come I didn't comment. Um but what I did was I kind of made a I kind of made a little comparison. I said, you know what? I technically cannot put Steph over Manu at all, even internationally. Manu's international record outweighs Steph's record. No, there's no doubt about that. Parker, on the other hand, yeah, I can see that definitely. I mean, do I think Steph needs to, uh, Stefan needs to be in the Hall of Fame? 100%. He really does. I think he earned it. Even if his NBA career was was shit, his international career, he's a three-time CBA champion. I think he's a CBA finals MVP, what, twice? Um, no, one time. Uh, three-time CBA all-star, international MVP. Uh, he's, he's accomplished everything overseas. So I think based off of that, plus, you know, Two-time NBA All-Star, All-NBA third team, I think once or twice. Um, NBA rookie first team. He's got the credentials to get in. He's got the he's got the he's got the stats to get in, I feel. So definitely should be an NBA Hall of Famer. But better than Manu Ginobili? No, I can't say that, dude. Not at all. I can't say that. Better than Tony Parker? The only thing you can come at me is Tony has more NBA final NBA MB, uh championships. He has an NBA Finals MVP, which I mean it was against the Cavaliers, wasn't it? I mean, I think anybody that was, you know, scoring not named Tim Duncan could have easily gotten the MVP that year. But nonetheless, Tony is a fine NBA Finals MVP. Better than Tony? I think he is better than Tony when it comes to putting resume to resume. There's no doubt about that. How do you guys feel about that? I agree. I mean, not better than Manu, and maybe it's like real close knit. It's just kind of who you prefer with Tony and Marbury. I mean, based off, you know, since it is the basketball hall, not NBA, I mean, yeah, he has a resume for it. You know, people forget how phys- physically talented, gifted, and, you know, talented was the Marbury. I mean, I remember watching him when I was growing up. And I was like, damn, this guy's legit. And I even, I even begged my mom for some Marbury shoes back then because one of my friends had them. I never the got them. Ones? I never got them, but were they the N ones? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, you break your ankle in those. But <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. I wonder if they still on sale anywhere. Uh, yes, they have a pair of N ones, and I only know this because I went there a while back. Was in, I think it was in San Marcos. The strawberries. They had some and ones there, and I was actually gonna buy them. Maybe I'll go this weekend and maybe buy some some and ones, and you know, sport them like I did back in the day. I wish they made the t-shirts. Remember the t-shirts? 
the, oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> the talking trash t-shirt type things call me bus driver because i'm taking you to school and all that we kind should, of we stuff should hoop. we should go hoop and you should wear those and let's let's just see how nice you look in them in the and one shoes yeah i don't know if i want to wear them dude i have weak ankles as it is <laughs> <laughs> Where's some ankle braces, man? Wear a little headband and a little cutoff, dude. So, so we're talking a, a sweep the league playground basketball type thing. Jesus, yeah, dude. And I wear some, you know, Bill oh Russell God. shorts for you, and I'll throw some Kyrie's on. Uh, I got first pick of the draft. I got Derek. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have uh, the ankle bowl. We got the butter bowl, and now we got the ankle. See, so uh, the last person who, who breaks their ankle is the winner. <laughs> that would, I mean, I wouldn't even know if Derek might need not even last in that game. Jesus, I wonder, I wonder how that game would go if we would do Derek, uh, Shamaya, Stats, Rock, me, and Candace. I wonder what teams would be. Hmm, Shamaya and Derek would probably have to go one and one because that's the height right there. Uh, stats on Candace. Wow, that that might work. That might work. Rock will get dominated. There's no way he's gonna be able to guard me, like at all. I'm, I'm even gonna, I'm even gonna blindfold myself, and Rock still can't guard me. Dude, Rudy acts like he's gonna keep up with me running around. He's gonna be gassed. No, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I got Rock 100, man. What? I got Rock 100, 100 Rocky. I got I, you. I am a YMCA All Star. What the hell? I I got tattooed by Devin Brown's nutsack back in the day. I mean, I should get some credit. <laughs> he, he, Rudy was like Mike, man. When that happened, he gained some powers that day. I did. I I actually probably I never played basketball again because that was embarrassing. I mean, I I was like Frederick Wise and Devin was Vince Carter and I just like holy cow this guy's like jumping over me that that's yeah I'm never gonna I'm never gonna be able to get rid of that on my head that image but it happened I think I I, I gotta know stats why are you taking Rock over me man Rock just he's he hits the he hits the weights man he's hitting the gym. He's taking what? care of himself really well, man. I think Rock's gonna. I think Rock's gonna get around you, dude. I heard Rock can't shoot the ball though. We have mutual friends. I guess so, man. I guess we'll have to see. I'm gonna have to call RK Min and ask him again about Rock's game because apparently they played ball one time. And he said Rock can't really shoot the rock. That's what I was told. Hey, man. Well, he we could all probably have get to <laughs> that. What? We all have our off days. Did y'all just play one time or was it multiple? Uh, multiple times. And I was hitting shots. I mean, hmm. me and Robert, I was guarding Robert for the most part. Was he balling on you? We, we traded back and forth, but he was giving more buckets to Ben, which is funny. Hmm. I was say, I'm like 20 times better than RK. So, I mean, there's, then I know for sure you can't guard me at all. Uh, We're going to have to do this. We're going to have to do this. about that, man. We're like the same height, man. Come on. Same height, same build almost now. I don't have the muscles as you do, but I don't need that shit to slow me down either. So, I mean, yeah, I'm going to outrun you. I'm telling you, dude. Man, I am the Ric Flair of basketball. I am the dirtiest player in the game. You running around, there's a reason why I wear a size 12 trip. Let's we'll see, man. I'm, it's I'm, a foul. I'm, I'm it's a one foul. Player, it's like I told my coach, you know what? It's one foul. I get five of them. It's one foul. So I know where to use them. I'm like the gambler. No one to hold them. No one to fold them, man. Easily, easy, easy. We have to make this happen. Stats, we're going to need a videographer. So we need you to, to be the cameraman for this. We need some you Got it. We need some evidence of this ass whooping that Rock's about to get on the court. Done. We'll Let's see. do it. <laughs> I'm talking all this shit. And if I lose it basketball, we're going bowling, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> that is its use, man. You know, I was having an off day, but at least I'll beat you in bowling. We're going bowling as like, soon as we're done. Up. We're going bowling as soon as we're Rudy, done. You, you, I was like, you, you can beat all of us combined in bowling, Rudy. We know this. <laughs>
No, I can't. I'm not as good as I once was. I'm never I'm never going to get back to the glory days, but nonetheless, man, you know what? XFL fantastic. We're going to be going to some XFL games. So be sure to look for us. It was kind of late when I posted. I apologize. The next one, if one of us goes to the game at nine o'clock at night, find us, take a picture with us, post that picture on social media by tagging myself, uh, stats, rock, anybody from Sweep the League, and you have a chance to win a free Sweep the League t-shirt. So that's the one where we're going to support the Brahmas. And also... Start looking for Sweep the League on some boxing things. Uh, we're going to get into that probably as the time comes by here. I'm going to see if we can try to make something happen this week. If not, it'll be the next time that we have a San Antonio fighter on our main card. Uh, we're in negotiations to hopefully be a sponsor for one said fighter. So as that news comes out, but... They can't leave the show without reminding you about special leaf tea, 100% natural ingredients, no sugar added. It's one of the greatest energy drinks out there. It's olive leaf tea. It's special leaf tea. Go to their website, www. I think I added one too many zeros, W's in there, but whatever it is, www.specialleaf.com. Order yours today. So for Rock, Rocky Garza, stats, the, uh, the Brahma Bull stats. This is Rudy Combos Jr. Until we sweep the thing again next time, we'll see you later. Oh, yeah.